We love to call your name.
power in the name. Amen. And we want to say welcome once again to our worship service. And um, this is the time where we invite you to join us in our statement of dedication, our way of declaring who God is to us and who we are to him and what he's called us to do. So would you join me at this time? We are the people of God. We are committed to learning how to follow Jesus in every area of our lives. The Holy Bible, the Word of God, is essential if we are to be strong, stay strong, and do great exploits for Christ. We are committed to one another, to fellowship together, to love one another, to worship together, to serve one another, and to serve our church. We pray for one another, and we come together to pray. But we know that when the people of God cry out to God, God has promised to do miracles in our lives, our homes, and our city. Therefore, once again, on this day, we dedicate ourselves to live for Christ. And when we leave this church building today, we go out with a renewed commitment to tell all people in every place and every walk of life about the good news and hope found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you just continue in celebration and praise right where you are? Just give a shout to the Lord, give a hallelujah, put your hands together, clap and praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome again, everybody, to New Community Bible Fellowship's worship service. And this is the time where we bring forth an offering, where we give to the Lord. We bring our tithes and we bring our offerings. And we want to invite you to be a part of that. We want to invite you that at, at this very time, if you could just take the time to go to your app, New Community Bible Fellowship app, if that's how you give, and give that way. Or maybe you give by going to our website, newcommunitybible.org. If you can go there at this time and just bring your offering to the Lord. Or maybe you text to give on your phone or some device. Do that at this time. Let's take advantage of this moment and have a full worship service to the Lord. So would you give? And for some of us, we simply write a check and we mail it into the church. And if that's you, would you write that check now and join us in this time of giving? We want to thank you for your faithfulness to give. You know, giving is an expression of our faith, and faith is what causes a ministry to go forward. So we thank you for the faith that you show when you give, the faith you show in God, and we thank you for how you help the ministry to go forward. We've had an incredible expression of faith over the last six weeks as we've been going through our summer quest. It's been so powerful. And we just had our finale this past week, and one of the highlights of it was to have Johnny Rez, who is really a nationally known singer and artist, be with us with our students, our teens, to celebrate and to pour into them as he led them in worship and as he spoke the word of God into them. It was a powerful, powerful time. And it's just one of many times throughout these past six weeks of Summer Quest that we've seen God move. And it's because of your faithfulness in giving is why God is able to do these things, and we thank you so much. And because of that, literally hundreds of peoples of lives have been changed and transformed through the power of Jesus Christ over these weeks. So we thank you and bless God for you so much. And so as we give and as I finish up this time, I just want to also welcome our guest speaker for today, and that is uh, Sylvester McKenzie. And I also want to welcome him to New Community Bible Fellowship. He's going to be coming on board to be part of our team in the very near future. So we love you, Pastor McKenzie, and we welcome you in Jesus' name.
and we are safe and we have a faithful God. Hallelujah. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Come on, let's say that again. Let's say right there. community. What a privilege it is to be in the sanctuary today, even though physically you guys are not here. Spiritually, I'm sure that your heart is here, and I know you're anxious to get back and fellowship together. But in the interim, while we're waiting on God to move, I want you to know that God is up to something huge in the middle of this. I know you and I are finite. Our minds are small, but God is infinite. He's infinite in all of his wisdom, and he knows exactly what he's doing at this very moment. So I'm privileged to be here to worship with you this morning, giving praise and honor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, put your hands together right where you are and worship Jesus. Amen. 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 I want you to open your Bibles with me this morning as we turn to Mark chapter 4. We're going to look together at verses number 35, beginning at verse number 35 through verse number 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through verse number 41. I want to give a shout out to my friend, Pastor Kevin James. Uh, Pastor, I just thank you again for uh, allowing me to share this moment with the people of God. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through verse number 41. Here's what it says. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, 
and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? They feared exceedingly and said one to another, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? I've entitled today's message, Learning How to Go Through a Storm. Learning How to Go Through a Storm. Join me as I just lift up the name of Jesus in prayer. Father, I thank you for this moment. I pray that you continue to fill us with your presence and your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a lot like I am as it relates to this coronavirus thing. Man, I'm really ready for this thing to go away. And I know scripture says, be, be not weary and well-doing, because you'll reap in due season if you faint not. But man, this thing is just about worn me out. I'm ready for it to go away. I'm ready to get back to what I thought was a normal life and a normal way of living. But I've learned that storms always occur in life. I've lived just that long. But storms are not the problem within themselves. Where you position yourself in the storm can make all the difference. And so today, as we look at this text here, I want you to know that uh, both Luke and Matthew in chapter 8, Luke and Matthew in both their chapter 8s speak about this very same storm. And today I want to just give you several things that will help you to be able to go through your storms in such a way that you can trust God and you can maintain your joy and your confidence in him. So let's dive into today's message. Several things I want to give you. Here's the first thing. You need to prepare for the storm before the storm. If you're going to make it through any storm, one of the things you need to learn is to prepare for the storm before the storm. When I was a young man growing up, they done things a lot different than what they do now. When a storm alert came and a storm was getting ready to happen, we would shut down all the lights in the house, all, make sure that everybody was in. We would go to the basement if it was a tornado and what it, whatever it was, and we would just ride the storm out. We would make sure that we were in the right place in the storm. And what I want to suggest to you today is that storms are a normal part of life. But how you position yourself in the storm will prepare you to endure and go through the storm. You see, as we look at the disciples here, they were perplexed. They were fearful. They were afraid because of the storm that was happening. But the Bible says something that really, it was funny even when I was reading it, that Jesus went in the back of the boat. He went in the stern of the boat, and he got a pillow, and he literally went to sleep. But remember that the boat that they were in was because Jesus said, let us go to the other side. You see, I know that this coronavirus thing is a serious thing. I know that all of the stuff that is hitting the United States and hitting the world at this time, it's a serious storm. And it's really not something to be taken lightly, contrary to some of the opinions out there as if it's some type of hoax or myths. No, the coronavirus is real, and it's a real storm, and it's raging, and it's hurting people. It's destroying lives. It's hurting families. But here's what I want to suggest to you, that in the storms in your life, there are going to be storms. But remember that the only reason that they were in the boat in the beginning is because Jesus said to them, let us go to the other side. You see, knowing that storms are going to come in your life means that you at least need to be in the will of God. I suggest to you that I wouldn't be in any storm that was, God was not present in. I wouldn't be in any storm that was because of a decision that I made on my own without the Lord. See, one of the comforting things to know about this passage of Scripture is that the storm they found themselves in was because they were obeying the word of the Lord. And right now, I pray that you are in the middle of God's will for your life, whatever that is. We know that there's a will for God for the church, universal, and as a whole, but God has a personal will for your life. And I want to suggest to you today that storms will come in your life, but I wouldn't be caught in any storm without God. I wouldn't be caught in any storm without knowing what God's will is for my life. See, if they wouldn't have been following the word of the Lord, they wouldn't have found themselves in that position. And today I want to suggest to you, I believe this about you, new community. I believe that you are in the place that God wants for your life. I believe that you're seeking God and you're searching for God. And you got to understand that since you're seeking for God and searching for God, that God does have your back. You are not in this storm by yourself. You are in this storm with the Lord. Amen. And so be encouraged by that. Second thing that I want you to understand about storms, how to endure storms 
is that storms are time for you to just sit, rest, and watch God. Listen to what I'm saying. Storms are times for you to sit, rest, and watch God. I referred a little bit earlier when, when I was growing up, they didn't allow you. If it was a storm, a thunderstorm, a rainstorm coming, they would shut all the lights down. You couldn't watch TV. You couldn't talk on the phone. You couldn't do anything. And, 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 and they had an old saying, it's funny, the more that I look back on it, when you would hear the, run, the, the roar of the thunder, they would say, God is moving furniture up there. They would say, God is doing his business. And as funny as that sound, at least they knew something, that in a storm, Whatever God is doing, you need to wait until God is, get, is over, till the storm is over. You need to wait until God is finished doing what it is that he's doing. You see, today I want to suggest to you, when the disciples looked at Jesus and saw that he was asleep in the boat, that was their moment to just sit down and watch the Lord, to have their eyes on the Lord. David learned something. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. You see, if they would have looked at Jesus and they would have saw that the storm did not affect him, can I suggest to you today, no matter how bad our storms are, no matter how big they are, no matter how large the coronavirus is and all of the disasters and things that are going on in the world today, nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too hard for God. And so can I suggest to you that storms should not c catch you by surprise? This was not the only time in Scripture that the disciples were in a boat and a storm came. You remember when Peter came walking on the water, Jesus sent him ahead of him, and he went up to pray in the mountains in the high place, and they went out in a boat, and a storm came. Can I suggest to you that in this area that these men were in, one of the prominent ways of travel was by boat. And so they were familiar with storms. Storms were not unusual to them. But it was something about this storm that caused them to take their eyes off of Jesus. It was something about this storm that caused them to forget whose they were and who they were with. You see, Jesus was in the boat with them, and the storm was not disturbing his rest. And I want to suggest to you today that God is not afraid because it's a storm. God is not afraid because the coronavirus is here. God builds us in the times of storm. So in the times of storm, if we would just look up, if we would just keep our eyes on God, we would know that God, listen, is in control of storms. Understand that storms do not control God. God can control storms. Now, I'm not suggesting in any way that God is causing this storm of the coronavirus and all of the stuff that is happening in the world today. But what am I, I am saying to you today is that this stuff is not more powerful to God than God. Is there anything that is too hard for God? And I know what's coming out of your mouth right now. You're saying that there's nothing too hard for God. There is no storm, there is no situation, there is no test, there is no disease, there is no trial that is too hard for God. God is con in control of the storm. The storm is not in control of God. You see, storms are opportunities for us to get to know God. In the last part, verse number 41, Jesus rebuked the wind. He said to it, be still. They said, what manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. You see, they really still didn't even know who Jesus was. But this storm was an opportunity for them to know him in a different way. And I want to suggest to you today that the storms that we are in, these, this lockdown, this quiet time, where our routine is being disturbed in a little different ways, this is an opportunity for you and I to get to know God in a way that we did not know him in the past. This is a moment, listen what storms do. Storms are periods of revelation. God reveals himself to us in a new way when we're going through storms, when we're going through tests, when we're going through trials. God reveals a side to us about him that we may not know. You, you know what was said by some of our more senior saints? They used to say this, 
If I was never sick, I wouldn't know God could heal me. If, if I was never in trouble, I wouldn't know that God could be a lawyer in the courtroom. In other words, what they were suggesting was is that in the different phases, in the different tests of my life, I learned something different about God. God shows himself in a different way in different areas of my life when I'm being tested. Can I encourage you today to allow you to know the way you can go through this storm is just watch God. God wants to show you a side of him that you may have never known if you would not have been going through this storm. Second thing that I, or third thing, excuse me, I want you to understand about storms is you should never allow fear to take the lead in the storm, but you should always respond to a storm in faith. Never allow fear to take the lead in the storm, always restore, respond in the storm by faith. Here's what I want to suggest to you today. Fear is a God-given emotion. God gave you that emotion. If you were out in a dark place at night and maybe you felt something that was an unrest in your spirit, maybe that was a warning sign to, let, to make you aware of your surroundings. Maybe something was going on around you. So fear can be a good emotion. Jesus wasn't just rebuking them about the fact that they had fear. What he was re rebuking them about was that they were operating in fear apart from faith. Some people suggest as an acrostic that what fear is, is false evidence appearing real. Can I suggest to you today that this coronavirus is, is not false evidence appearing real. Scientifically, it is proven that this thing is a reality, and we ought to take some type of precautionary measures against this coronavirus. But I've got another acrostic for fear, and here's what it is. Fear exaggerates or eats at reality. Fear eats at reality. As powerful as this coronavirus is, God is greater. And in the middle of this storm, you should put your faith in God. Never allow fear to be the leading, the leading emotion in your storm. Why? Because fear clouds your judgment. The reason why I went to Mark's account of this particular storm was because his account is the only account that says, when they awoke Jesus up, Master, do you care that we perish? You see, if we're operating in fear when we're going through certain tragic areas in our life, it will give us false judgment. Just because they saw Jesus sleep didn't mean that Jesus didn't care about them. And a lot of times when we're going through, if we'll admit it, we kind of think that. Lord, do you care about what's happening right now? Uh, my mother used to work for a lawyer, and uh, his wife was tragically killed in Florida by a drunk driver. And her mother said, see, if there was a God, would he have allowed that to happen? In other words, what she was saying, see, if, if, if you were real, if you really are God the way you say you are, then why did my baby die? And the disciples were in this realistic place that sometimes you and I find ourselves in. When we're in a storm in our lives, when we're going through, sometimes we question God. We wonder if God really cares about us. Do you care about what we're going through? Can I suggest to you that God loves you, that you are the apple of his eye? And if you operate in fear, fear will cause you to misread God. God loves us. God, it is, it is not God's will that any man should perish. God is not just simply using this coronavirus. He's not using a storm because he wants to destroy people. If anything, a storm is an awakening that we need to draw closer to God. One thing that I understand, as a matter of fact, as I'm preaching this message to you, that here in Northeast Ohio, we're preparing for some rain, some showers, some storms. But I, I, I want you to know that there are umbrellas that are made for storms. God is an umbrella while you're in a storm. God is the high place. If you run to him, he will protect you. Come on, somebody say amen here. So how you position yourself in this storm will make all of the difference. Do not allow fear to be the leading emotion in your life at this moment. Respond to God in faith. Also, you need to understand, faith not only, I mean, excuse me, fear don't only cloud your judgment, but it also distorts your view of God. 
Look at how they were looking at him. If they they would have just saw that God was resting, if they would have just saw that Jesus was in that boat, he was undisturbed by that storm. But here's the other thing that they missed. They forgot Jesus was in the same boat with them. So if the boat was going to go down, then that means Jesus was going to go down. But they also forgot that Jesus said, we're going to the other side. See, God never promised us that storms wouldn't arouse in our lives. In fact, Jesus said, you're in the world, you're going to have some troubles. See, storms should never catch us by surprise. Storms are a part of life. And I want to suggest in some ways, storms are a necessary part of life. See, if Jesus told them, let's get to the, in the boat, let's go to the other side, him being God, I'm sure that he was fully aware that storm was going to come. But I wonder if he wanted to know if they trusted him enough to believe that when storms arose in their life, that they were still, his word was true. He said, we're going to the other side. So guess what? They were going to the other side. I don't care if a storm did come. They were not going to drown. Just like when Peter was walking on the water, the Bible says he began to see see the wind and he began to look at the storm. He took his eyes off of Jesus. The Bible says he began to sink. Understand this. I don't think you can begin to sink. Either you go under, come on, or you are on the top of that thing. If Peter was going to drown, he would have went under. If the boat was going to go under, it would have went under. Can I suggest to you, if you were going to go under, you would have went under by now. But the reason why you're not under is because God won't let you go under. The Lord is with you. And so in this storm, don't allow fear to overtake you because God will not allow you to go under if you trust him. Here's something else that amazed me. Remember when Lazarus died, Martha and Mary sent a word to him, said, Lord, the one you love is sick unto death. They want Jesus to come. Jesus didn't respond the way they was hoping for. He didn't come immediately. The disciples said, didn't you hear what they said, Lord? The one you love, Lazarus is sick. Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. Can I suggest to you that Lazarus didn't die because of the sickness? But listen to what Jesus said. It's for the Son of Man to be glorified. If God allows something in your life, even something as tragic as death, and I'm not prophesying that, I'm not suggesting that, I'm not trying to get you in a place of doom and gloom, but if if God would allow the worst to happen in your life, he is so sovereign, he is so in control that it is for his glory in some kind of way. I don't know how God does that. I don't know how he pulls it off, but all I know that is God is such a big God that if you trust him enough, even the most tragic things in your life will in some way work out for your good and God's glory. See, don't allow fear to distort your view of God. Fear can make big things even bigger. Fear can make big things even bigger. Remember when Israel was getting ready to go into the land of Canaan? They went out, they looked at the spies, and they saw that there was large men in in the land that they were going to inhabit. And they came back and said, we are like grasshoppers. These men are so big, we are like grasshoppers in our own eyes. I believe they were big, but I believe their perception of God, their view, they were operating in so much fear that it even made that which was big even bigger. David, even though he went up against a a giant like Goliath, didn't see Goliath bigger than his God. I want to suggest to you that the storm that we are in right now or whatever personal storm that you are in in your life is not bigger than the God you serve. But if you respond to your storm in fear, you exalt your storm above God instead of exalting God above your storm. So today, please don't allow fear to be the leading emotion in your storm. Number four, remember that no matter how big or how life-threatening the storm becomes, God is with you. I know I've said this repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly in this message, but I really want you to get it. This was a severe storm. The Bible says it. It was even life-threatening. But guess what? Jesus was there. And God promised us that he'll never leave us. He will never forsake us. And I don't care how life-threatening our storms become. I don't care how massive our storms become. Lo, he is with us even until the end. Jesus was in the boat with them. And God, I hope, let me suggest this to you, I hope God is in the 
boat with you, or at least you are in the boat with God. Because I believe more importantly than God, them being in the boat and God being in the boat with them, is that they were in the boat with God, since Jesus was the one that suggested that they get in the boat in the first place. So position yourself that in your storm, you remember that you're in the boat with God. Look at what Nahum says. It says, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord by no means clears the guilty. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm. Listen to what I'm saying. Even in storms, God has a presence. Even in storms, God has a presence. And his presence is more massive than any storm. Fifth point I want to give you for learning how to go through your storm. Turn to God in your storm instead of away from God in your storm. Even turn to God instead of on God in your storm. They went and woke Jesus up. Mark his count. Lord, Lord, master, master, don't you care that we're drowning? Don't you care that we perish? They misread the Lord. See, you and I, God always invites us in the time of trouble to realize that he's a very present help. God said that we can call on him in our times of trouble. So uh, don't allow the storms of your life force you to turn at God and accuse God and to, or to turn away from God. Allow your storm to push you closer to God so that you will understand more about God. Proverbs 10.25 says this, When the tempest passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous is established forever. The word tempest here means when the storm is passed, the wicked is no more, but the righteous is established forever. See, I just believe that in these times of storm, it's a weeding process. For those who seek to get closer to God, they will get closer to God. But for those whose hearts are nowhere near God and let us join ourselves together in praying for those who do not realize that God really is the God that he declares himself to be. Some people are falling away from God. And they're separating themselves from God. They're pointing their fingers at God saying, see, I told you God didn't really exist. But God is true. And if you put your confidence in him, if you just come to him, he would in no way cast you out. Listen, turn to God in your storm and not away from God in your storm. Here's my sixth and final point. At some point, God is going to speak to your storm. Listen to what I'm saying. At some point, Jesus is going to get up and say, peace, be still. Master, master, they went to him. Wake up, wake up, Lord, it's a storm. We're going through something. Jesus, even though he was asleep, he had to be asleep when the storm started. Finally, he got up and said a few words, peace, be still. And look at what happened. The storm didn't resist. The storm didn't keep blowing. The storm ceased at the word of the Lord. And if, you, if nothing else was clear to you today about this message, if I rushed my way through it, if I bumbled and I stumbled as I often do, here's what God wants you to take home from today's message. At some point, this storm too will pass. At some point, God is going to say, whether it's by a miracle or medicine, peace be still. And all of the storms that are raging at this moment are going to have to cease at the voice of the Lord. Because I want to say it to you one more time. The storm is not in control of God. God is in control of the storm. And whatever storm you find yourself in at this moment, whether it's a financial storm, whether it's a relationship storm, whether it's a physical or mental storm, they said this month is mental health awareness. Maybe you're struggling in some way emotionally. Maybe you're going through. At some point, God is going to speak to the storm in your life. If you just watch God, if you just wait, if you just get not weary and well-doing, if you wait long enough on God, at some point, God is going to speak to this storm. Guess what? And it, too, will pass. Here's how I want to close today. 
I believe all of us can come to different conclusions or different viewpoints about our storm. Mark, or excuse, Mark chapter 4 here has his scenario about the storm. Luke 8 has his scenario about the storm. Matthew 8 has his scenario about the storm. But only Luke, uh, only Mark, excuse me, is the one that said, Lord, do you care that we perish? I wonder if Mark was the only one that kind of felt like that. Why, why is it that Luke didn't have that in his writings? And I know that these are synoptic gospels, and I know they all are given their viewpoint, but why is it that Luke didn't remember that they said, Master, don't you care that we perish? Why is it also that Matthew did not pen and mark that it was said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? I wonder if it was Mark was the only one that was feeling that way. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. We all go through our storms in different ways. But one thing is unanimous, that they all came to the same conclusion, and that was even the winds and the sea obey him. And no matter what your viewpoint is, no matter how you're handling this storm we're going through, I believe if you would just put your faith in God, we will all reach the same conclusion, that God is in control of the storm. And at some point, the storm will have to answer to God and obey him. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for the privilege of just being able to encourage your people in some small way. I know the Holy Spirit has a way of speaking, Lord, that is beyond who I am. I thank you for choosing to use me. But Lord, I want to pray for those right now who are uneasy in the storm, unsettled in the storm, maybe who are going under in the storm, maybe who feel emotionally like they're not going to make it through the storm. I want them to be encouraged to know that they're going to make it to the other side. Jesus said to them, why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. In other words, they made it to the other side. And God, I know that we're going to make it through the other side of this. This too shall come to pass. And so, Lord, I pray for your people at this moment that you would just speak peace to their hearts, that you would just speak peace to their minds, no matter what they're going through, no matter what they're facing, no matter what's occurring in their lives. Let them experience your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, I kind of started this out by saying storms are not so bad within themselves. The key thing or the important thing is where you position yourself in a storm. And I want to suggest to you today that this is your moment to come to God. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this storm is a perfect time for you to invite him in. So would you do that? Will you invite Jesus to come into your life? It's as simple as this, just saying, Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my life, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. And listen, I know that New Community is not meeting physically right now. They're only meeting virtually, but I want to suggest to you that Pastor Kevin James does want to be your pastor. And if you're out here, even if it's in a virtual community and you don't have a church home, you can still join with New Community. And there are ways for you to do that online. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Yes. Praise God for that wonderful word. We are so blessed to be able to receive the word of God and to be worshiping together. And if you've been blessed by what you've heard and God is leading you to give your life to Christ, would you just take the time right now in the comment line or to text to us, Jesus, yes. We want to pray for you. We want to connect with you on that decision you made to give your life to Jesus. We want to encourage you, counsel you, even give you a Bible if you need it. So please take the time to do that. And as we move our service toward a close, this is also a time to invite all of you, whoever needs prayer, whether you are a member or whether you are a guest online with us, if you need prayer, whatever your prayer need might be, would you call in at this, at this time? There's a, there's a phone number right there on the screen. You can call in and someone will be able to pray with you personally, whether it's about your finances, 
Maybe you're just dealing with fear or feeling overwhelmed because of COVID-19. Maybe there's someone who's actually dealing with sickness and you want prayer for them. Whatever your prayer need might be, please call in. And if you can't get in, just make sure you text in there, call me, and we will call you back as soon as we get the lines clear. A real person will call you back. But we are so excited because we are getting close to the time where we are going to have our small group conference. On Friday, August the 7th, and Saturday, August the 8th, we are going to be having an incredible time of training our small group leaders for more than 60 small groups that we're going to be beginning in the fall. And we want you to be a part of that. You don't have to be a small group leader to come to our small group conference and be blessed by it. You're going to be built up in the Word. You're going to meet a lot of other people who are excited about the Lord. You're going to learn about discipleship and how to lead small group Bible studies. It's going to make you stronger. This year, we're doing the entire conference online. We're doing it through video conferencing. So you can join us. You can register for this event by simply going to newcommunitybible.org and just follow the, the information there and you can sign up and be a part of this small group conference with us. We think you'll really be blessed by it. Well, as we close out our service, we want to let you know that we love you, we celebrate you, and we're praying for you. We want to ask you to continue to be strong in the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. Know that God is with you no matter how difficult things may get. And he's holding on to you in the midst of your storms, and he's going to get you to the other side. God bless you, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. We serve a mighty, powerful, strong God. There is no one greater than our God. There is no one higher than our God. There is no one worthy as praise as our God. Oh